Okay, so this lecture talks about neutralization. And neutralization is something that when you have an acid and a base put together, um, they are going to neutralize each other out. So if you remember when we talk about that pH scale and the acids fall down on the 0 to 6 and then a period of 14. So the whole pH scale goes from 1 to 14. In the middle, you would have 7, and that's something that's neutral. So if you put something acidic and you add that to something that's basic, they're going to neutralize each other. So neutralization is the reaction of an acid with a base, and what's going to be produced is water and a salt, always. So an example would be sodium hydroxide. This would be our base with hydrochloric acid. That's our, <laughs> That's our acid. So you would write that HCl, hydrochloric acid, plus sodium hydroxide. Make sure you check your charges. One to one and one to one. Um, and then this is going to be a double replacement. All neutralization reactions are a double replacement, which means that H and Na are going to swap places. And we just said up in the definition that you are always going to get water and a salt. And in this case, it's going to be sodium chloride after that double replacement. So down at, in the vocabulary after number two, the neutralization is the reaction of an acid with a base, and you will produce, I don't know why it's doing this again, water and a salt. The salt is the substance consisting of the anion um, from an acid and the cation from the base. Remember, cations are found on the left side of your chem helper, and they are a positive ion. Anions are negative ions, and those are on the right side of the chem helper on that front page. Okay, so everything's going to be a double replacement. So that means that if you look up top again, H and sodium, they replace each other. They're going to swap places. Um, in terms of a titration, it's the process of adding a known amount of a solution to a known constant to determine the concentration of the other one. So we are going to look at the equations that go with that. But if you were to do it, um, you might have what we call a burette, okay, and it's this tube of glass with a point on it, and then there's like a stopcock on the side to add things drop by drop. And then down here, we'd be able to have a beaker, okay, and in this burette, we have a known concentration of, let's say, a base, okay. And then we are going to put our acid in here. And maybe we put phenolphthalein indicator. And that's the stuff that once it becomes basic, it would turn pink. Phenolphthalein, something like that. Um, indicator is in there. So inside this beaker, we have acid. And then we put some of this indicator in there as well. It's usually clear until we have enough basic stuff added. So at some point after this drop, drop, drop goes in there and you count it one by one by one, something that is acidic inside of here is now going to turn over to basic because we've added so much of that base. So now in this beaker down here, we have more base than acid and guess what? That phenolphthalein indicator is going to turn a bright pink.
Okay, on page 10 in your packet, um, you can watch that video link up at the top. They're going to show you a titration and um, the amount of that base being added drop by drop in that burette. Um, and then watching that pH level go up on the left. Um, as far as the calculations go, we do calculations for titrations. And I will just tell you that these become, um, they're all the same, but you need to do several of them to get the practice and the repetition, just like anything else, um, to see that pattern. And of course, you can always look back at your work. Um, so the steps are right here when you start looking at the calculations. The first part is going to be to write a balanced equation and then they're going to have you first solve the moles of base or acid and it just depends on what you start with. You're either going to start with the base or the acid. That's why they put the or there. And if you start with the base then you're going to find the acid later. If you start with the acid then you're going to find the base later. And then at the end, we will do the molarity. And then you're like, what the heck is she talking about? So let's take a look at B. Um, 23 milliliters. That's the volume of this molarity of base. Okay? So we have two parts. We have the volume and the molarity is needed to titrate 50 milliliters this is a volume of vinegar. So vinegar is acetic acid, that chaku one. Um, until the phenolphthalein in the solution turns pink, what's the concentration of the vinegar? So this is our question right here. We want to know what the concentration of that vinegar is. So first step is to write that balanced equation. So we write out C. H3COOH plus, we are adding to that sodium hydroxide. So the chaku is our acid, that's acetic acid plus sodium hydroxide. And remember, you always get water, and then your salt is going to be this is kind of a goofy one. Um, it's actually the H at the end that kicks off. So it's N-A-C-H-3-C-O-O. -O. And you're going to be like, where did that come from? Well, we took this little guy off of there to make the water and sodium replaced it. Um, okay, so now you go and you start with the part that has two different things but you need to put this guy in liters, okay? Because molarity, remember, is moles, or I'm sorry, molarity equals moles per liter. So put, this is just kind of a plug and chug of the piece that you have two parts for. So the molarity is 0 0.100 molar equals, you are always solving for, we're at step two, the moles, per liter. How many liters is 23 milliliters? It's 0 0.023 liters. Here you solve for x and x ends up being 0 0.0023 moles of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so we found, if you look up at number two, calculate the moles of, we did the base. Now we need to do step three, which is calculate the moles of the acid. So whatever you end up with here comes down to the next part, and it's just a mole-to-mole -mole conversion. So we go 0 0.0023 moles of sodium hydroxide, line, line. And when we look up at our equation, we see that we have one of those, so one mole of sodium hydroxide. And now we look at the acid. Well, how many moles of the chaku are up there? There's one of those. Mole of CH3. So we're trying to figure out the strength of that acid. 
So if it's 1 to 1 there, divide by 1, multiplied by 1, that means we also have 0.0023 moles of our acid, same as the base. Okay, now last part, so we found the acid. Last part down here, we are now going to do step four, calculate the molarity. Okay, we are finding M, and we use this equation again, moles per liter. So molarity equals 0 0.0023 moles of acid, and we know from up here, remember that we have 50 milliliters, milliliters which is how many liters? Point zero five zero liters. When you do that division, it is point zero four six molar. Okay, I am going to post. I think I can do one more. Um, it's just that these get goofy. Um, if they get too long, then they cut me off. Okay. So next one, a 25 milliliter, make sure you convert that, solution of HCl is completely neutralized with this volume of this molarity. So this is our starting part because we've got the volume and the molarity. First step is to write your equation, HCl plus NaOH. HCl is our acid, sodium hydroxide is our base. We will get out water and a salt. So we get water, and remember these two swapped, so now it's sodium chloride. Look at your charges to make sure everything's balanced. Now we go to the next step. Moles, or molarity equals moles per liter. Find the one that you have the two parts for, that's right there. And it goes one molar equals moles per point. 018. And that ends up being, is that right? 0 0.018 molar. Okay. Third step, we just found the molarity of our sodium hydroxide, which is our base. So now we do the acid. So now it's mole to mole. 0 0.018. I'm sorry. This was moles. Moles of sodium hydroxide, 99. Nine. Look at your equation. You had one of those, sodium hydroxide. If it was two or three coefficient, you would put that here. Um, and we have one mole of HCl. Okay, so this two is going to be 0 0.018 moles of HCl. And then our final step, you do the molarity. M equals 0 0.018 moles of HCl. And looking back, our volume was 0 0.025 liters. And when you do that division, it ends up being 0.72 molar. Okay, so every step Always follow these equations up top, and whatever you end up with for an answer in like step two, then that goes to step three to start. And then when you finish and you get an answer for step three, then it goes down to step four. So they just keep carrying over.